Hi, Rob Smythe here. In my last Xcode Quickie, I showed how to make a grid on the screen uh, that held an array of image views. It was a checkerboard. We had red, black, squares set up, and we had uh, some pieces that you could put on the board by clicking, and then clicking again would take them off. It uh, looked like this. So I'm putting pieces on by clicking, and then I click again and it takes them off. Well, that's okay, but that's not what you want for a game, is it? Because you don't want to remove this piece. You want to move it to a new place. So what you want to do is drag the pieces around. So this little uh, quickie will show you how to do that. We'll just modify the old code. If you didn't type in the other one, uh, it doesn't matter because you can start fresh here. Here is the program from the previous one with a few modifications. If you didn't see the previous one, what you would miss if you if you didn't work through that was just some explanation of how to set up the arrays and put them on the screen. But that's okay, you'll see it here in the code and you can pause the video and examine it at your leisure. So to start off, um, we did file, new, project, and picked uh, a single view application and uh, set it for universal so that we've got iPad and iPhone capability. We didn't do anything on the storyboard and we didn't do anything in the uh, viewcontroller.h file, all in the viewcontroller.m. We started off with this, with 65 grid cells. That includes cell zero, so then one to 64 uh, will be the checkerboard. I used to say here uh, on top of cell and have that dimension to 65 because I allowed you to just put a marker wherever you clicked and all I did was the marker was there to begin with just hidden and we just showed it. Uh, in this case though uh, I've changed it so this now says markers and we've got 13 markers that counts marker 0 so we're actually going to use 1 to 12. Those of you who are modifying your old code you don't have to change on top of cell you can just deal with it by change it because it's too much typing after a while. You change it in one step by going uh, edit, um, find, replace, and replace all on top of cell with marker. Uh, this is new, so add this. Uh, we're defining two floats, cell X um, and cell Y. These are arrays. The idea is cell X is just going to keep the X value of grid cell and uh, cell Y will keep the Y value, so that just saves typing grid cell dot center dot X, which is say cell X. All right. These were defined in our previous version. I actually had cell width equals 57 here, but we don't need to give it a value because it gets its own value later on in view did load. There's our 64 squares, our 12 markers, and this is new, so add this. Uh, variable which is just going to keep track of which marker we're moving. Okay, if you did load, it's the same as we used to have. In the previous one, we defined uh, the values for iPhone and the values for iPad, you know, the margins and the sizes. And we put the colors in, the red squares and the black squares, put them in. Here's the new stuff, so add this. This is saying cell X uh, for square I is grid cell I dot center dot X similar for Y, and put the cell on the screen. Used to have put the markers on the screen, but I'm not putting the marker in the same place this time, so I have a similar routine a little below where we put the markers on. All right, here's a place where we put the markers on. In this case, we put the markers. This is kind of similar to where we were putting the grid. This says make the first marker in the left X, which is the X margin, make it one more cell width over, and then cell width times column. So column one, two, three, four, five. That's just because I got six markers across there, and there's eight squares, so to center it, I'll go to the left margin and move in one cell. For the Y position, this used to say top Y, but now we want it below the grid, so we'll take cell Y squares, the 64th cell, move one cell height down, and then put them along the row, okay? 
everything is similar here we uh, allow user interaction and touches on the markers right well, touches began had this before the um, this says the CG point location so the location of where we're going to put the object is is going to be uh, where we touch so where you touch this defines a variable called location all right so down here this says for I equals one to the number of markers if the place you touched equals that marker marker I marker one marker two then we'll make the center of the marker equal to the location right this point you touched up there and we'll keep track which equals I will keep track of which one it was this looks a little odd why would you make the center equal to where you touched because you're just touching there well actually you're not because if you're going to drag it you'll touch it off center so you want it center to move to where you're actually touching right so that's how you start the drag and you continue the drag with the next one with a touches moved routine because what the touches moved routine does is it touches is it I'm sorry it calls touches began all over again that's what this self says self means in this view controller find the method called touches began and do it so if you move then touches began will will kick in again and that'll move the center to this new location so that's how you accomplish a drag we could have ended right there and this would work what it didn't do up to this point is when you let go it doesn't center it in the square so the meat <laughs> of the coding is actually just accomplishing centering the darn marker in its square so here's how that works we're going to define a minimum distance that the marker is away from a square and so the idea is we'll find out how far it is away for each square and then move it to the minimum one we start with a minimum distance being uh, one cell width away I'm and I'm going to be using squares because we use the Pythagorean theorem with apology to those non math fans and the Pythagorean theorem deals with squares a square of this equals a square of that plus a square of that so this actually is a square cell width times cell width uh, times two will be the farthest away anything can ever be and still be on the grid closest don't worry about that you'll see how it works closest equals zero we're just going to keep track of what the closest one is so we'll start with zero there isn't a closest one yet d squared is going to be the distance away that something is and it's a float which means it's got decimals in case we've dropped the marker very close to the boundary between two squares and maybe uh, the decimals will decide who wins dx and dy are just the distance the difference in the x distance and the y distance apart each cell is from the marker okay if which is not equal zero that means we found a marker we moved a marker right because it used to be zero until we moved it this is the longest thing that you have to type in it looks really complicated but logically it isn't this says if marker which in other words, if this markers centers x value is greater than the left margin and if this marker centers x is less than the left margin plus eight and a half cell widths then it's on the grid left to right if it's past eight and a half cell widths like nine cell widths it'll be off the grid because there's only eight squares right and if this marker's y position is bigger than the top margin and the marker's y position is less than the top margin plus eight and a half cell heights that means it must be on the grid okay otherwise we wouldn't bother snapping it to a position on the grid right because it wouldn't be on the grid so dx is a difference between that marker's x position and cell x for the first cell and dy for the second cell so the minimum distance is dx squared plus dy squared plus one uh, the plus one is just to have it reassigned here. Now that I think about it while telling you this, I didn't need to set it up here because it gets its first value here. So that was kind of dumb of me doing it up here. I could take this right off. 
and it's not going to make any difference. Okay, continuing. For i equals 1 to the number of squares, dx is the distance from that to the ith cell x. This is the first cell x is the ith. We actually could have taken away this 1 and started this at 2, but anyhow, dx is a distance, dy is a difference in the position, so it's the distance away the y is. Here's Pythagoras, d squared is a distance away. This marker is from the ith square, and this is the key. If that distance is less than min, which was the distance of the first square, remember, then min equals this one, and we found a closer one, so now the ith square is closest. So after running all through this, we will have closest equaling the number of the closest square. So this says marker, which is center, is going to be made into a point whose center is the closest cell x value, closest cell y value. And just to show that we've done it, this says placed uh, marker, marker which, let's see which, place marker which on square closest. So that keeps track of, you'll use those later. Right in the program when you try to see whether you're, uh, whether it's a legal position to leave it and all that stuff. So I'll start it up again just to test it. All my simulators in use here. I turn it off. Start it up again. So now you see we're over here. Nothing's happening. You could, of course, if it's out of bounds, you could move it back, or you can do all sorts of tricks there. But now we're over halfway onto this, so we're onto the grid. Now we're kind of in the middle of some things. I'll see if I can exactly get it right on the center. Makes a decision, right? And I can take it and move it back off again. So I hope this is of value to you, uh, that, that you learned something that, that you could use. As I mentioned in the last one, I'm not uh, an expert Xcode programmer. And it always seemed to me that I had to, to work hard to learn how to do anything, and then a month later I would have forgotten how to do it. So to help me remember, I'm trying to tell it to you. So thank you for listening. Good day.